Hello people, this is your boy Danny from Plug and Play, and today we have a tutorial about the shatter effect in After Effects. This one is super cool, it has a lot of room for experimentation, and there's just a lot of stuff that you can do with it, so let's get right into it. Alright, let's start out by making a new composition, and we can call this shatter effect or so. Let's make it 1920 by 1080, let's make it 30 frames per second, and then we can make it about 10 seconds long. Let's pop over to Chrome and let's find some image that we want to disintegrate from. So I'm going to be using a dirt scene right here. So we can either save this to the desktop and then import it in After Effects that way. But I'm just going to copy it to my clipboard. Jump back over to After Effects. Hit Pasta and Copy Pasta. And then we're imported into After Effects here. I'm going to scale this down a little bit because it's a really big image. Something like there should do. I'm going to be using the After Effects logo, so I'm just going to copy it from this other composition, but feel free to just jump over to the web and find a transparent version of it for yourself. So this is what it looks like here. I have a fill on it, so that's why it's red. But let's go ahead and let's make a new layer. And let's look up an effect called Fractal Noise. Right here, let's drag that to this new layer, and let's find another effect called Colorama. And let's drag this guy into this layer as well. Let's go inside of the fractal type, and I'm going to be choosing dynamic. Noise type, I'm going to be choosing block. And I'm going to shrink this down a little bit more. So let's go into the transform, and then scale this down. Now let's go into colorama. And when we use the shatter effect, it's going to look for a specific set of colors to um, shatter from. So we want to include black yellow, red, as much as we can into this. And as you can see right now, it's mostly just green and blue with a little bit of purple. So let's go inside of the output cycle. And I'm going to be adding a new color. And let's make this black. And then as you can see, all of the color right now is mostly in this uh, blue and green section. So let's go ahead and let's drag these down a little bit. And let's just make sure that we're including all of these colors into this. Okay, maybe something like that should do. I'm actually going to scale this down a little bit more inside of the fractal noise. Alright, great. Let's go ahead and let's bring our After Effects logo or whatever logo we want to shatter. And let's bring that on top of our fractal noise layer and let's set the track mat to be alpha mat. Great. Let's go ahead and make one new layer again. And I'm going to be changing this color to be white. Let's set that below the fractal noise and our logo. And let's select the white layer, the fractal noise, and our logo and pre-compose those. And we can call this map. Great, let's go ahead and let's make another fractal noise layer. And let's go ahead and let's bump up this contrast. And I'm also going to be shrinking this one down as well. Let's add a fast box blur to this as well. And I'm going to be setting the blur radius to be about, let's do five. And this is just going to blur out and smooth out our map a little bit more. So we can go and pre-compose this, and let's call this one gradient. Even though it's not really a gradient, you'll see why in a second. All right, let's go ahead and let's pre-compose this background dirt layer. And we can call this just dirt background. Now let's go ahead and let's look up our shatter effect and let's drag that onto our dirt background composition. Let's go inside of shape and inside of pattern, let's choose custom and set the custom shatter map to be map. Let's also make sure that white tiles fix is checked. We can leave repetitions at 10, same thing with direction, origin, extrusion depth, I'm gonna set to 0.05. This is just because I don't want my extrusion to be a crazy amount. If you do want that effect, then by all means, crank that guy up. Inside of Force 1, let's set a keyframe on Radius and Strength. Inside of Gradient, let's go ahead and choose our Gradient layer. And let's add a keyframe to the Shatter Threshold as well. Inside of Physics, let's go ahead and let's change the Viscosity to be 0.3. Let's set the Gravity to be 8. Let's set the Gravity Inclination to be 1. And let's go inside of Material, 
and material is going to be where you dictate how uh, reflective you want these pieces to be, how much um, light you want them to give off when they shatter. So I'm going to set my um, reflection to be 0 0.005 and I'm going to set my highlight sharpness to be about 15. Okay, let's go inside of our keyframes and let's set the radius to be zero to begin with. Let's set the strength to be three and let's leave the shatter threshold at zero. Let's go ahead and go forward four frames and let's set the radius to be something that encompasses our entire logo here. As you can see, we want to cover every single corner here. So let's crank this guy up. And for me, it's going to be around 0.31 as a radius. Let's set the strength to be 0.1 here. And let's set our shatter threshold to be about 70%. And now we can go ahead and let's go about three seconds forward. And let's set the shatter threshold to be about 100% now. Let's go back to these beginning sets of keyframes here. And I'm going to be moving the strength to be one keyframe apart from the other. So it's going to be three at this one frame. The next frame over, that's going to be 0.1. Now let's go ahead and let's change the view to be rendered. We can go ahead and um, hide these bottom layers here. Let's make one new layer again. And this is going to be the background layer. So we can just call this BG. And now let's see what we got. All right, let's go ahead and talk about a little bit what's going on in this effect. So remember we have the gradient and the map layer. Now the map layer is what is going to be dictating how we generate these little particles inside of this layer here. So if we jump into this map layer, as you can see, we have all these different colors that are only happening where our logo is. And since that's the case, the shatter effect is generating all these different particles only where those colors are. Now, the gradient layer is what is going to be dictating when these different particles are being acted upon by the shatter effect. So if we scrub through in our timeline here, you notice that we still have these particles sticking around in our, uh, on our logo. And that's because the shatter threshold hasn't reached that level yet that allows those particles to be acted upon by the shatter effect. So if we jump into our gradient layer here and we go ahead and add a ramp to this, you can see that the bottom pieces here are being acted upon first before these top pieces are. And the reason for that is the shatter threshold is looking at all these different black and white colors along this gradient inside of here and the threshold starts at completely white. So the pixels in the gradient layer that are the whitest are going to be acted upon by the shatter effect first. And as we increase the shatter threshold more and more, there's going to be more and more um, pixels higher up here that are being acted upon. So if we go back into our gradient and let's get rid of this ramp here. And now we just have it so there's kind of randomness going on in here, right? There's going to be these white pixels that are going to be happening first, and all these darker areas are going to be happening later on as we increase that threshold. Let's go ahead and let's set the view back to be rendered. And unfortunately, with the shatter effect, it does not accommodate shadows, so we're going to be faking that a little bit. Let's go ahead and let's duplicate this map layer. Let's turn this on and let's solo this layer. Let's go ahead and add a color key to this layer. Set the color key to be white. And then let's go ahead and add a fill to this. And let's invert the fill here. And one last thing, let's go ahead and add a drop shadow to this. And with the drop shadow, we're going to be choosing shadow only. I'm gonna set the distance to be zero. And let's set the softness to be about 30. And now we can go ahead and unsolo this layer. And now we have a little bit of a shadow going on here. For after this dirt disappears, there's going to be a little bit of depth going on. Now, one cool thing about the shatter effect, it does accommodate cameras. So let's go ahead and make a new camera. I'm going to set this just to be 28. And let's hit OK. And now let's go ahead and let's start about at the beginning of the composition here. Let's set a keyframe on position. And let's go to the end here and let's just zoom in a little bit here. Now let's go back into our uh, shatter effect and let's set the camera position to be comp camera. Let's go ahead and let's make this map layer 3D. 
and now we have our shadow there and we're zooming in and as you can see when we are shattering these of these particles that are shattered are in 3D space. And just to give you a clearer view of that, let's go inside of our uh, camera tab here and let's choose left. And as you can see, we have all these different particles that are shattering in 3D space. Pretty cool. We'll go back to active camera here and let's go ahead and add a little bit of a camera shake for when this explosion is happening. So we'll go right here, the first keyframe, we'll set another keyframe on position and then we'll go about two frames forward and let's just move this guy down a little bit, maybe over a tiny bit. And then let's go about another frame forward. Let's go up again, maybe to the right this time. And then let's go about another three frames forward and let's set this back to be in the middle here so we can go ahead and copy this keyframe. And then we're back to the center. All right, let's say that instead of this big explosion effect, you want it to be more gradual where the dirt is kind of just drifting off into space to reveal the logo. Let's go ahead and start out by deleting these um, position shaking keyframes. And let's also delete this first strength keyframe. So that the strength is always going to be at point one. Let's go ahead and let's move out this radius keyframe here. And let's also set the shatter keyframe to be about 50 here. Okay, let's go ahead and let's go to this um, ending radius keyframe and let's go to set the view to wireframe plus forces. Let's set the position of that force to be down here in this corner. And let's also set the radius to be something that encapsulates this whole logo again. So something like 0.67 does it for me. Let's go into physics. Let's set the gravity to be about three. Let's set the gravity direction to be about negative 45. Now let's go ahead and let's set the view back to rendered and let's see how this is looking. So as you can see, the effect starts from this bottom right hand corner down here and as we move along and the radius is growing, it's going to be affecting more and more of this uh, map and there's going to be more and more particles drifting away. Now, while that is happening, there's also this shatter threshold that's increasing. So as we move further and further along in this shatter threshold, there's going to be more and more leniency for what, pa what particles are being affected. So let's say that you didn't want this to originate from a corner. We can go ahead and delete this first keyframe. And let's set the position to be right in the center. So right here should do it for us. And maybe we want to delete this uh, shatter threshold keyframe on 50% and just leave it so it's going from 0 all the way to 100. And this is going to be making it a little bit more gradual too. Now there's a lot of room for experimentation with this effect. You can obviously mess around with the map here and make these particles bigger or smaller, change the color around, use a different type of fractal. You can go inside of here and change the entire shape to be one of these presets, which are actually really cool. Like there's all different types of ones like puzzle is really cool, bricks are cool. All of these make really different and cool effects. But let's go ahead and let's copy this bottom map layer and let's go inside of the dirt background and let's paste this guy into here. We can go ahead and let's get rid of the drop shadow. And let's set the fill to not be inverted. And let's change the fill color maybe to be something like here. And let's set the blending mode to be overlay. And now let's jump back into our shatter effect. And now this logo is going to be starting out this kind of uh, blended in red color. And as the shatter effect happens, it's going to be revealing our white layer below it, which can be really cool and adds a little bit more dimension to this effect. Now, the way that we set this up, it's super easy to swap out logos. So let's jump inside of our map layer here. And I got a new logo. And let's go ahead and let's copy this uh, Adobe logo here. Let's go back into After Effects. Let's pasta this in. And let's go ahead and let's delete this After Effects logo. And we can go ahead and hide this Adobe logo and let's shrink it down a little bit too. Now let's go back to our shatter effect. And as you can see, everything updates dynamically.
As always, thank you for watching, and I hope that you learned something. The shatter effect is a really cool effect in After Effects, and there's a lot of stuff that you can do with it. So please keep experimenting, please keep pushing the limits, and if you make anything cool, share it with us on our social channels. If you want to learn more advanced techniques in After Effects, go ahead and hit that subscribe button. Until the next one, this has been Danny with Plug and Play.